An early influence for me was the Tall Tale postcard and the exaggerated card. These were really prolific uh, in the early 20th century where people would send greetings in postcard form uh, of giant things like, you know, someone catching the, the largest fish out of the river and saying, you know, here in the prairies we catch them really big or uh, giant vegetables as if they're harvesting this super crop from somewhere on a farm. So all of those sorts of imaginary things and, and mythic imagery always had a, a big influence on me. And I started to produce my own tall tale images because I realized there was nothing like that in the early 1980s in Victoria. And so I would, starting to do photo collage uh, and montage, I, I sort of, an influence for me was a, an early um, design studio in England called Hypnosis that used to do a lot of album covers, but they always differentiated montage from collage because you're trying as much as possible to keep in mind the light source of the, in, in the images. You're not just taking uh, disproportionate pieces and collaging them so that you're trying to look at, at sort of perspective and uh, lighting source in the pieces. But so I uh, tried playing around with a bit of that and, and it sort of progressed from that. I started to do more tall tale imagery, which then also led into s sort of series type things. Um, now I look at them and they're sort of ha ha groany, but I did a, a whole series of salmon puns for a while, like, you know, salmonella, salmon chanted evening, salmon 40 salmon, salmon and Garfunkel, which, uh, Anyhow, <laughs> and a lot of that sort of stuff. And that also led into some hand tinting. Um, for me as a child, my mother used to do a lot of, uh, she'd sit at a table at night with a daylight bulb and apply photo oils to uh, portraiture for a studio in Victoria. And uh, I always thought that was really interesting how you transformed this sort of monochrome surface to this interesting looking uh, transparent color over top of it but uh, I ended up acquiring colors from her and having sort of observed her with trial and error eventually started to color a lot of pieces because I kept finding that um, being drawn more and more to Canadiana as a theme and in a nostalgic way whether it was influenced as well by the early travel posters of the Canadian Pacific Railway and those hotels and how they romanticized uh, the Canadian landscape and destinations more, and even how they totally and, uh, romanticized indigenous people and taking them out of context and so the tinting and a lot of the stuff I was doing seemed to to look more and more nostalgic in that sense even though uh, it, it wasn't necessarily intentional but um, and what happened from that I started to uh, go with my wife to uh, Mexico, uh, sort of on an annual basis, and one of the first trips when I went to Oaxaca uh, City, and at that time in the early 1990s, there was really that school of magical realism going on, uh, similar to what was going on with writing from like Marquez's novel, but there was wonderful things like is somebody lots of people floating in the air or or again it was it was just sort of a tie back to the exaggerated postcard thing for in my mind so it's like oh great it, people get it and I went and you'd, I'd show some of my imagery in Mexico and Mexicans would usually get it right away and just because somehow so I started playing around with with some friends um, photographing them or their children in um, these sort of tall tale situations as they got older and and from that it developed into sort of an exhibit in Oaxaca for these Mexicana imagers that sort of paralleled uh, Mexican uh, travel posters which are prolific and beautiful and a lot of that art also in many ways was maybe showing a Mexican, a Mexicanness that wasn't necessarily in the same way that Canadianness isn't what you see in the poster, but it's romanticized it so much that people then look back on it as if that's what it was like in those days or something. But to sort of get to the point again, the uh, I started doing this Mexican stuff 
uh, Mexican themed sort of tall tale stuff using my own background imagery from my travels but I then started acquiring for a long period of time early uh, 20th century photo postcards of people that were real photographs and and making montages of these images and then hand tinting them so I still tend to sort of go back and forth so I'll get into a Mexicana and then go back to Canadiana and, and just one thing for me that is also in, um, an influence, I guess, was I started photographing like some of these pieces, uh, souvenir objects I had, like the birch bark canoe or the chalkware moose, little figurines, and putting them in front of paint by number uh, paintings, old vintage paint by number paintings, as if it was a diorama or a, a backdrop, and then hand tinting those images. And from that, it just seemed that these backdrops had this really naive uh, quality that was very similar sometimes to some of the Group in Seven paintings when you look at them that are almost like distinct pieces. So it uh, seemed to enhance a Canadian and as, uh, as, a, as a backdrop. And then from those I started doing large uh, life-size backdrops for people uh, like human size to stand in front of as if it was an itinerant photography backdrop that I would set up on the street and photograph people in. And then utilizing paint by numbers in other ways and reusing them to laminate onto the fronts of guitars and, and stuff like that. This past Labor Day, I was part of a, a paint by number reference exhibit at Bumbershoot in Seattle. It was called Bumber by Number. And it was interesting because most of the work there was uh, largely Seattle artists who had each been given a vintage paint by number. And then they were able to rework it so it showed uh, a small image of the work as it existed and then how they reworked it. But I was invited to be part of it because I had my large banners and they wanted a circus feel to the exhibit. So outside is set up uh, four of the banners, uh, sort of four seasons in paint by number form of landscapes. And then people could be photographed in front of them. And I used that as an opportunity to photograph people because there were so many interesting people over the three days that would walking around on site. So I did a lot of that. And I also had some of the guitars uh, that I had done uh, as part of that. And they are light up more like a, a wall shrine type piece, taking, um, I've done it oh, maybe over 10 years. Initially it started because a friend of mine who was repairing guitars said, I've got a whole storeroom full of ones that cannot be fixed any longer, so do you want them? And I was like, okay, I'll wire them up with lights and put objects on them and make them uh, as if they're like wall shrines now. So that's how that came about. and. Um, just with this paint by number reference that keeps coming back every so often, I, I decided to laminate the fronts with old paint by numbers and, and make that, it, it fit in well with that whole paint by number show. But So I'm still doing a lot of that at the moment with, it's a great way to utilize found objects and things that are sitting in drawers that need to be used up at home. So that's interesting. And I guess with the Mexicana work, um, Again, in an al the way that it alternates, or I'd end up alternating between Mexicana and Canadiana. Um, I had done some uh, an exhibit in Seattle of the Mexicana work a few years ago, and it was at a time when um, 
the exhibit itself wasn't, it was a real strange time, uh, economically, of course. But uh, someone in Mexico City who uh, publishes a lot of stationery and uh, art cards had seen the imagery and published some of them. And it's interesting now because I'll, I'll always hear from people that say, oh, I was in Mexico City last week and I saw your cards in this place. Or they, they have very good distribution in like uh, art gallery shops and things like that. But through that, I've got other work. I, um, the Mexican singer uh, Lila Downs had seen one of my cards with the um, women with donut hat, Donas con Donas, which has two sort of Mexican cowgirls with um, Instead of sombreros, they're inverted Tim Horton donuts on their head. So she had seen that, and she thought it was funny, and had contacted me to say, "Well, would you like to do the artwork when we're going to redo the website?" So, and, and and through that, so it's interesting through these these something seemingly benign like these note cards in Mexico. I keep getting um, uh, interest from people about certain things. So, oh, there we are. <laughs> 